So in this video, I'm going to answer the question that you might have, which is, why do I need to know really anything about applications if I'm studying for my Cisco CCNA routing and switching application? I mean, after all, my certification, I mean, after all, I'm studying to learn how to configure, troubleshoot, and monitor Cisco routers and switches. What do applications at layer seven of the OSI model have anything to do with that? First of all, you have to ask yourself, why do you want to be a CCNA? You know, most people that are pursuing their CCNA certification is because in some fashion, they want to gain employment in the world of networking. They want to be a, a network administrator and maybe someday a, a network engineer. Uh, so they want to be able to actually touch and start working on those routers and switches they, that they see, you know, blinking away in the cages of their company that they currently can't get access to. So that's the ultimate goal. But a network administrator, if you actually do get that job, or a network engineer, can't effectively do their job if all they know about are routers and switches. If that's all you know about, you don't know anything about applications, it's going to be really hard to do your job. Why is that? Well, because you know your job responsibilities as a network admin or network engineer might include monitoring existing links for bandwidth consumption. Well, if you don't know what applications are in your network and you don't know how those applications work, what their objective is, how often they're expected to be active and doing something, how can you predict how much network bandwidth is going to be used by those applications? And if you can't predict that, how can you predict how much network bandwidth you're going to need in your company? You can't. Um, another job that you might have is implementing and monitoring basic security policies with access lists. Once again, if you don't know what applications are authorized and allowed in your network, then how can you create and structure and implement access lists to allow those authorized ones, but to deny or block the unauthorized applications? You can't. Similarly, troubleshooting problems in the network that could impact network-based applications. You know, computer networks, you know, routers and switches can have a variety of things that can go wrong, from completely crashing and dying, to having uh, congestion, to having jitter and delay, and, and a whole variety of things, to routes changing and shifting to different paths. And all of those things impact applications to one degree or another. It might cause the application not to be able to even start at all. It might show up as an application starting, but just sort of appearing to be hung and not doing anything or a variety of things. So if you don't know what applications you have running in your network and you don't know at a real fundamental level how they do their job, you don't really know when a problem occurs in the network, how that's imp impacting the applications in your network. So some of the questions that you're going to need to be able to answer as a network administrator or network engineer are, what are our applications? You know, what is running in my company? Are they client server or are they peer to peer applications? And if you're not familiar with those terms, I'll go over that. I'll explain what the differences is, are. Are those applications TCP or UDP based? What port numbers are in use by those applications? That's going to be especially critical if you're trying to track down that traffic in a, in a packet sniffer output, a Wireshark output, or if you're trying to implement security access lists and firewalls allowing and denying certain applications. Knowledge of the port numbers that they use is going to be critical for that kind of thing. Name resolution. You know, a lot of applications out there have as an integral component name resolution where the application itself, you provide it some human readable name and it needs to be able to resolve that name to a number, usually an IP address. So if the app, first of all, you'd have to ask yourself, is the application I'm concerned with doing that kind of thing? And in what circumstances would this application need to perform name resolution? And when it's performing name resolution, how is it doing that? Is there a, a file within a server somewhere that it looks up internally, locally to itself that resolves names to addresses? Does it utilize DNS to do that? We need to be able to answer those questions. Where are the servers? Okay, so once we know what applications are allowed and authorized on our site, 
the next thing we have to ask ourselves is, okay, where are the servers actually located that are required to make these applications work? Are the servers on our site? Are they actually in our campus and our building somewhere? And if so, where are they? Or are they hosted off-site? Are we maybe using Amazon servers or some other cloud-based solution? You have to know that in order to be able to troubleshoot problems. And what security-related concerns do I need to know about? In other words, you know, where are applications allowed? You know, there might be certain applications that, that payroll uses that's really super secret and only payroll is authorized to use those. So we need to know that. So we can implement firewall and access list policies in other parts of the network so that that application won't be sending data to parts of the network it shouldn't have access to. Are these applications supposed to be available 24 by 7? Or are they only supposed to be available like at certain times of the day? Bandwidth allowances. You know, there's certain applications, for example, multicast. If we're talking about multicast video, multicast video consumes a lot of bandwidth, especially if we're talking about high definition, crystal clear video, consumes a lot of bandwidth. So you might have to know, okay, is video allowed in my network? What part of my network is it allowed in? And how much bandwidth do I really want it to use? Do I want people to be able to start and use video wherever and whenever they want? Because if I do, I might end up accidentally starving out the bandwidth of some other stuff. Maybe some voice over IP phone calls will start dropping because there's not enough bandwidth left for my IP telephony traffic or other types of things. So we need to know, you know, what kind of bandwidth allowances am I going to provide for the various authorized applications that are in my network. And credential storage and administration for applications that require credentials. In, in other words, applications that require someone to provide a username and a password, or require someone to provide a digital certificate or something. Where are those credentials stored? Once again, are they on site? And if so, where? Where is the server located? In what closet? In what room? How is it connected to the network where those credentials are stored? Or is it off-site? And if so, who's the contact I'm going to call if I have problems with the credentials? And also, what's my policy going to be if I discover that there's a rogue application in the network? Is my policy going to be that I'm going to let it keep going and I'm going to monitor it so I can try to track down maybe who's doing it? Or is my policy that I'm going to have a firewall or an access list in place so that it can't even start? I don't even care about tracking it down. It's just stop dead and can't even start in the first place. Or some other policy. What am I going to do if I discover there's a rogue application that I did not authorize running in my network? So as a network administrator or a network engineer, these are all application-related questions that you're going to need to deal with at some point and you're going to need to be able to answer. So in summary, a network admin doesn't necessarily need to know the intricate details of how an application works. In other words, you don't need to know the gory details of emails necessarily. Maybe you actually are not the email administrator. It's not your job to set up the email application, configure it, get all the bells and whistles working. So you don't have to know all the various different options of your email system. You don't have to know specifically the message types and message sizes are going back and forth. But you do need to know is email being used? What kind of email is being used? Who's allowed to use the email? So without the information that we talked about in the preceding slides, configuring a network to meet predefined requirements would be impossible. So hopefully by now you've got a pretty good idea of, okay, even though I really love routers and switches, I probably need to know a little bit about applications as well. So that being the case, Let's go into the next video where I'm going to provide a high-level overview of the differences between TCP and UDP.